In today's Madden 21 video, we're going to talk about defense. That's right, guys. We're going to talk about everything you need to know about defense in Madden NFL 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you've never been to my YouTube channel before, my channel is devoted to helping you get better at Madden, both on the offensive side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball. And so if you're interested in getting better at this game, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen that way you can be notified whenever we upload a new video and we oftentimes upload videos every day from two o'clock four o'clock six o'clock and eight o'clock p.m. eastern time as well as we stream every single night at ten o'clock p.m. eastern alright guys so I've been getting a lot of questions about defense and I want to talk about defense, but I want to talk about defense differently than what you see a lot of people talk about defense in Madden. What I want to talk about as far as it pertains to the defensive side of the ball is how you actually stop people. How do you actually game plan for somebody? How do you actually take things away? How do you actually play defense in a game as opposed to just run blitzes and coverages and how do you know what to do when? right um and so this video is all about the higher level of defense this is about understanding what your user can do understanding what adjustments you need to make to certain coverages to make them better and then understanding exactly how to stop certain things that your opponent may be doing and so the way we're going to do this today is we're going to start with trips tight end now, everybody knows that Trips Tight End is one of the best offenses in Madden 21. And one of the um, one of the primary things that they're going to do is they're going to pass the ball, right? They're going to use X-Spot, doubles and sale, verticals, uh, PA slot corner, uh, PA shot wheel, drive post, curl flat, all these powerful passing combinations. But at the basic core level, you have to understand, and we're going to talk about this in terms of field coverage for you, and understand what exact area on the field are they attacking, and then what you can do to stop that. So we're going to start with one specific play from this formation. Now, what I've done is I've got the basic coverages. I've got cover two, cover six, cover three, cover four quarters. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come out in um, either cover two man, or cover four palms. It's up to you if you want to play man, you go cover two man. If you want to play zone, you go cover four palms. But what I want to show you in today's video is how to actually, like I said, how to actually play it and understand and stop what people are going to be doing. So one of the things you know about trips tight end, let's let's answer a couple of like common things that you need to know about trips tight end. As a general rule. Most people are going to run their trips to the wide side of the field. Okay, when I say the wide side of the field, you look, we're on the right hash mark. And if you, if I zoom out here, what you'll see is that there's more um, grass, there's more space on the left side than there is on the right side. And so what's very common is they're going to run the trips to the left side because it's going to give them more space. Um, and the routes are going to work a little bit differently on the left side as opposed to the right side. Okay, so you, you understand that let's say for example, and you probably see this if you face this coverage or face this defense, but if they want to run a flood concept, which is just a streak, a corner and a flat, they can easily run that flood concept and stand a good chance of having a lot of success as you can see right there. Okay, so that's kind of um, one of the things that you have to understand and you have to be aware of. The next thing you have to be aware of is you have to be aware of what they can do, which is what's really good about trips tied in. What are they probably going to do in terms of motion snapping? What are they going to do in terms of, uh, you know, different things like that? Okay, so what, what are they going to do as far as motion snapping goes? Well, from trips, you can motion any of these three receivers to the right. And most of the time they will. Most of the time, you're going to see one of these three receivers go to the right side of the screen. It could be this guy. You don't know. Um, it could it could be it could be you know Evans. It could be Godwin. It, it, it doesn't matter. 
the bottom line is they can create a two by two set as well as being you know basically a three by one technically with a tight end on the right uh, essentially it's just a trip set but because the tight end is compressed this allows them to motion into basically a doubles and the reason that that's important is let's say they're running something like PA slot corner I can motion Gowan over right and now I can run a flood concept to the right side of the field just as easy as I could run one to the left side of the field so those are some options that they can have they can flood the outside Another thing they could do from trips tied in is they could flood the inside. For example, you could do something like this right here where you have a deep crossing route to Gronk. You have a post. You, you maybe have something like this. It's a very simple concept. It's very effective. This is basically double post, but you're going to double, you know, affect that middle of the field. And if, they, if they're vacating that middle of the field space, you can now take advantage of that. That's why Maple coverage, unfortunately, not always the best strategy against a trips tied in look. Um, Another thing that they could do is simple, but it's very effective. They could run something like this with these little curls and hitches. You've probably seen this before, right? Uh, these little curls and hitches are very effective. So there's a lot of options that they can do. So the question that you've got to ask yourself as a defensive player is how do you stop this? And I think even a bigger question that you have to ask yourself is where do you start? Where do you start? And with defense, one of the things that I feel like I have – not talked about a lot is I think it's actually very important to start with alignment of your defense, understanding your alignment, understanding your responsibilities, understanding where you can potentially get beat within that alignment. Okay. Because every defense, every defense is going to have an offense that will give it trouble. It's just what you have to understand about defense is you need to run a defense that you understand how to fix, right? You need to run a defense that you understand how to fix, meaning you need to run a defense that, even if let's say that um, let's say that the, a specific run out of iform pro is giving you trouble even though it's your base defense you need to understand that that's got to be a defense that can be adaptable enough that you could call an audible or you could fix it or you could shift your line a different way or you could do a different shoot or something you could do something to fix the problem if you can't fix the problem you're you're you can't you can't adjust and bottom line about defense defense is all about adjustment it is all 100% based on adjustment. If you can't adjust, you can't play defense. Defense, get. I'm telling you right now, if you try to come out and you try to just call cover two stock and you play some of the best players in the world, you are going to be sadly disappointed with how that's going to work out for you. Defense is 100% about adjustments. And so in today's video, what I want to talk about specifically is I want to talk about alignment specifically as it pertains to trip sets or uh, spread sets and how this impacts your pressure schemes because it certainly does. And so by alignment, as far as what I like to do is I like to go with auto flip on. I like to go with baseline and I'll get to explain that in a second because even though that I have baseline set in my coaching adjustments, I'm actually most of the time not actually baseline. This just, if you notice, they're going to start according to their base formation and then based off of your adjustments at the line of scrimmage, that could adjust. Ball and air defense is going to be on play ball. Strip balls on conservative. And then I, right now, I'm going to leave these four alone uh, for the most part. Now what I want to do is I want to come back out and I want to go over a couple things as far as how this pertains to man coverage, zone coverage, and zone, uh, and, zone and man blitzing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, SS Blitz 2 in our audibles we're gonna have pinch blitz uh, pinch blitz uh, is pinch blitz is gonna be our base play from this so we're gonna have SS blitz 2 we're then going to have uh, da, 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 we're just a standard let's go with a standard coverage um, just a standard like uh, cover 3 sky we'll, we'll grab that uh, I want to grab a cover 1 hole and then I want to grab um, SS Blitz, uh, SS Blitz, not three, but uh, SS Blitz, the man version of that. All right, perfect. And then we're going to come out in this formation right here. Now, one thing you also have to understand, and we'll get to this in just a moment, is adjustments. That's why you want to have your slot corner package on. The adjustments are different from Big Nickel if you don't have that, okay? Which do have some benefits, so it, it's also important to check that out, too. But we're going to come out and pinch blitz, though. This is going to be our base plan. I want to explain why. Um, this is my 
base play from this. It doesn't mean that I'm going to stay in cover zero pressure. All it simply means is my base alignment is to run that play, right? Then I can audible and I can check into something else. I could go to cover four. I could go to cover two at the line of scrimmage. And um, you see that alignment right there? See that step? See that right there? This is why you call this play. You notice that the safety rocks down. Now, if you pinch the line, the safety's going to drop back, and then he's going to come back down. So you've got to figure that out. If you press coverage, one of the things you'll notice here is that you'll press coverage, the safety's going to stay back. But if you show blitz, now all of a sudden that safety rocks down. And so you're base, basically what you're doing, because he's on a pinch blitz, what you'll notice is, let's say that I audible to um, cover three. You see that he stays there. You see that you see that he stays there. Even if I even if I move my players around, as long as I don't press coverage, he'll stay there. So if I want to play off coverage, which there's some value to playing off coverage this year, then I could do that. Now notice here on the right, if I go to cover three and I and I show blitz, you see he's now five yards off the ball. He's not on the line of scrimmage. It does not look symmetrical and it does not look the same. One of the major reasons that that is important is because one of the keys to your defense is disguise and making everything look the same. If your alignment is not the same pre-snap, it's wrong. And the reason why is because it's way too easy for the offense to say, okay, well, I know that he is in uh, cover three because that safety is, is off coverage. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to keep it really, really simple. And we're just going to run a simple flood concept to the left side, to the right side, and uh, you know, Lord help him, we're going to hit that seam up the middle, and we're going to do something like that. You cannot let that happen. You have to always make it look the same. So pick a defensive base defense that you can always come out in that will always always look the same. It's absolutely critical to your success. Now, from that base defense, adjust, adjust. You're going to then adjust and do certain things. The reason I like cover zero so much this year is not because it's necessarily a sound coverage by itself. It's because what you can do when you adjust is pretty cool. Um, let me give you an example. One of the things that you can do when you start adjusting this is you could simply pinch your line, show blitz, bring your safety down, right? And then from this point, you could do something very simple to take away the crossing routes if you wanted to. You could throw the right side guy into a purple zone. You could throw the left side guy into a purple zone. This is one of my favorite coverages right here. And then I'm going to man up this, this running back right here. Then I'm going to user this guy because one of the things about this defense, you always want to user the play side, or I'm sorry, the running back side linebacker in the shotgun and the weak side linebacker in I form. Okay? That's always going to give you a good advantage against the run. So you have this basic front right here. You have two purples. Everybody's manned up. And you have to ask yourself the question, where can I get beat? The only place that you can get beat is the only place on the middle is is the only place on the field that is open, which is the middle of the field. Okay? The middle of the field is where you can primarily get beat in this coverage. Understanding that now tells you and communicates to you that at the snap of the ball, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch for the middle of field routes. If they run a middle of field route, I'm going to be the robber. And if they don't run a middle of field route, if they're running just crossing routes and quarter routes and out routes and hitches and all that, we're going to bag it. We're going to stop it. But you have to be aware of where you can get beat. Another thing, you know, and, and this is why, you know, it's so important because one of the most important things that I can tell you within this coverage is to stay at home. Do not do not abandon your responsibility. Your responsibility is the deep middle of the field. Now, one of the things that people are going to do is they're going to go into something like uh, X spot, right? Something like this, where they basically try to, you know, essentially manipulate the middle of the field and have a bunch of crossers over the middle of the field. Well, this is where you can play chess with them. This is where you can play chess with them. You know, and obviously tight ends wide open. I understand that. We didn't man him up. But you can start to play chess with people. Because on one play, you could be in the middle of the field, and then on the next play, what you could do is you could go to something like SS Blitz 2, right? You can go to something like this, 
And now, essentially, what we're going to do is play a roll coverage. We're going to roll to the left, you know, fairly uh, by putting that middle line or that, that guy in a, a middle third. And we got that backer uh, on the right in a deep half. So now, if they try to throw any post routes, anything over the middle of the field, then all of a sudden, what's going to happen is you're going to bag it because you've got that. See how he robs? And he's going to come right in the middle of the field. Now, you know your responsibility is the outside curl flat. A lot of this is understanding what is your responsibility within the defense and understanding where you can get beat. And here's what I want to tell you, and I'm going to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. Do not, do not, do not be afraid of a five-yard hitch route. You always want to play deep to short unless the, the situation de necessitates that you play differently. Most people don't want to nickel and dime you up the field. Most people don't. And so if they're going to nickel and dime up the field, check. I mean, they're, that's good for them. It's good for you too. And then you're going to play a nickel and dime game, and basically what's going to happen is they're going to get in the red zone, and they're going to, and you're going to have to adjust, and you're going to have to play defense, and you're going to have to have to lock things down. What this defense allows you to do is this defense allows you to adjust. It allows you to adjust at a very high level. Now, one of the things that you're noticing here is when I um, when I try to unbaseline, it brings that corner over. That's something we don't want. We don't want that look. We don't want that look at all. What we want is we want something like this right here, right? We want something like this right here. And, and, and that's why I say it's, it's almost just more important to go ahead and baseline because you want this, this safety, you want him right off the edge because that's a blitz threat. That's a blitz threat. And what that means is basically um, if, if the situation is right and the situation calls for it, you know, I could send a, I could send a backer blitz off this left side. Now, you know, again, if they're running a lot of PA cross or running a lot of, a lot of crossing routes, you know, that's where something like this really benefits because there's not a whole lot of threats on the left side of the field. There's really not. Okay. So those are some things, some, some things to think about. Another thing you have to understand, and we're going to talk about this in another video today, where coverages are weak and also understanding your run responsibility. As a general rule, at least the way this year's game is played, I think it makes a lot of sense for you as the user to simply play deep right in this little pocket right here and come down on things as opposed to play the other way around. Uh, I think that's going to help. I think you're going to give up a lot less big plays in the run game, and I think you're going to give up a lot less big plays in the pass game. So the number one rule about defense Understand what your alignment means. You'll see here if I'm man aligned, look at what happens. Look at what happens to the man line. You see the blitzer here is is disguising this coverage, right? But it's kind of pointless because he can't really blitz from that position. So we may roll out of that into something like this, right? Now we got a five man blitz off the left edge. We've got man coverage on the tight end, um, and if the man if the tight end goes hot, you know then we got to jump out to that. But, but this is another option. And you see here, you're going to get instant pressure on the quarterback. You've got everybody manned up across the board. Man coverage is a good tool this year, at least in current Gen Madden. You've got to understand how to use it, though, because if you're, not, if you're not paying attention, man coverage can get burned over the top if you're not careful. People at this point in the season have really good receivers. They understand the routes they need to use. They understand all those things. And so you need to understand that man coverage as a general rule should be mixed in. It should not be something that you play, you know, just every single play. Okay. You see here with this trips alignment, I don't really like what this gives me. I don't really like what this gives me. What I would rather do is I'd rather do something like this right here where I'm, where I'm, I'm just like this. To me, this is the best alignment for trips. And here's why. If I flex this guy out, they don't know if he's, they're going to think, as a general rule, he's going to go in a hook zone, right? Or he's going to go in a, a hard flat or a hook. But you can do all kinds of things with this guy. You can man him up on the outside receiver. You can play um, You can play cloud coverage. This is one of my favorite tactics, by the way. You do something like this right here, where you basically run cover two. But all, and again, back to what I was saying earlier, your, your only job here is the middle of the field. If they run middle of the field, that's what you got. Everything else is going to be bagged. You'll see. You'll notice this little coverage right here is really, really powerful, um, especially if you got corners that can man up and cross man. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But um, this is part one of the defensive series of how to adjust. To me, 
the first thing you got to understand about defense in Madden 21 is you got to understand your alignment. And you got to understand what's a favorable alignment versus, versus what's not. Let me show you a couple of other formations in terms of alignment. What about tight doubles, right? What about tight doubles? You want to try to defend tight doubles like this? You're going to get dragged out of your mind. So what we'll do is we'll baseline and we'll press coverage. And then we'll probably show blitz from that look. Right? This, this is the alignment we want. We got outside leverage in case they run quarter routes. We can still hang with most of crossing routes. Um, and then we can basically adjust this into some kind of man coverage. Whether we want to play, you know, purples on the outside. Uh, or we want to play maybe a, a, a cover one roll coverage. You know, something like this if we're expecting uh, a crossing route to only come from one side. Right? These are, these are all options that you have. Um, so that, that would be tight doubles. Now let me show you Gun Bunch. Let me show you Gun Bunch. I think this is actually really important because Gun Bunch is another thing that you're going to see. And then we'll show you five wide real quick and we'll go over some alignments. So now Gun Bunch. What you'll notice is this slot corner is going to flip. Do we want him to flip? Uh, yeah, we kind of do. Yeah, we kind of do. But we don't want him to flip on the side of the safety. So what we want to do is we just want to flip the play. And what you'll notice is when we flip the play, you see the lineman move, and now the safety moves on the back side. And now you've got a favorable matchup over here on this side. On the back side, you got exactly what you want. You got that weak side safety coming down. And now what you can do is you can do all kinds of things, right? You can do all kinds of things. One of the things I really like to do against Gun Bunch is I love this coverage right here. Um, this is just straight man-to-man -man coverage, right? Straight man-to-man -man coverage. But because that left side safety is a safety, he can go into a middle third. Right, so you got man coverage across the board, man coverage across the board. You're blitzing three, so you got decent pressure. And then what's going to happen is, you know, based on what they run from bunch, your basically job, your job is a crossing route. That's all you got to handle. You don't have to handle a post. You don't have to handle, you know, anything else. You just have to handle a crossing route. So understanding the alignment is so, 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 so important. What about shotgun bunch tying in? This is a good question. This is a good one too. What if these trips receivers become bunch receivers? Right. Well, if we base a line and we show blitz, you see here we get a favorable alignment. This isn't a bad look right here. We just base line once and show blitz. All that's doing is it's saying we're going to unbaseline our principles and we're going to line up a little bit more according to the formation. And then one last one that I want to show you is five wide. Let's show you five wide real quick. And I think the five wide, in my opinion, the empty stack is probably the best. Uh, but I can't get to it, so we're going to go over empty trio. So this is trio, trio, trio. And what you'll notice here, these linebackers are all moving around. That's not what we want. What we want is this right here. And the reason we want this right here is because if you notice on this back side right here, this safety is kind of an extra defender. This safety is kind of an extra. It, it is actually necessary because of the trips. And so what you could do is you could do something as simple as this right here. You can man this guy up right here on R1, and then you can drop this guy back into coverage, and then from there you've got him. You know, you you, you basically play a cover, uh, a cover. Uh, you basically play a coverage defense, um, and what you'll see here within this guy is you could do something like this. Uh, you could easily man him up on the tight end. You know, you could easily do things like that that are going to basically cause disruption. But this gives you this gives you the ability not to get bombed on every play. That's one of the biggest reasons why I think Big Nickel over G might be uh, in the running for either the best defense of the game or one of the best defenses in the game because of what it can do against just from a base alignment, understanding things here. Now, it doesn't hurt your pressure to flex these linebackers out. I want you to understand that. It doesn't hurt your pressure to flex these linebackers out. The problem is it hurts everything else. It hurts your blitz ability. You don't have pressure on the right or the left now, right? But if you wanted to do something, in my opinion, if you wanted to do something, I would simply just widen these guys out just a little bit. This is going to get them stressed out enough about the bubble screen. You're not going to see a lot of bubble screen here because you could you could basically roll these three guys into coverage. Understand that's the power of the big nickel over G. Okay, so you you have you know you right in this position, you're you're pretty much in control here of what you want to do. And of course, you know, never forget the fact that you know you can cross man relatively easily. Rel relatively easily, you can cross man. You can do all that stuff. 
and just understand, you know, the the ability that you have to, you know, be able to to play some pretty stout defense, in my opinion, uh, even against a five wide receiver set. Uh, and we'll go over how to defend all that stuff in this series. But what I hope you can see here is, you know, just from a base man coverage, we haven't gotten into zone coverage yet. We'll get into zone coverage in the next video. But you can kind of solve the alignment issue, right? You can kind of solve that issue. So, again, just to recap, when you're choosing a defense, one of the most important things to understand is that defense is not about being able to stop everything. It's about understanding that when – they are starting to um, hit you in a way that you're weak, that you know how to fix that problem. You know how to adjust. Defense is all about adjustment. It's all about adjusting, and it's all about making the opponent play left-handed. What we're trying to do is we're trying to force our opponents to beat us with their left hand. We don't want them to run their best play. We really don't want them to run their second best play. What we want to try to do is get them to their third, their fourth, their fifth, their sixth, or seventh best plays. And everybody has that. Everybody has a number one play. Everybody has a power play. Everybody has a counter play. What we're trying to get them to do is go to that third level. What is it that they're going to call that it's going to be harder for them to read? What is it that they're going to call that's going to be harder for them to execute? That's what we're trying to accomplish on the defensive side of the ball. And then the last thing we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to make sure that they don't score touchdowns. We're trying to keep the, the game in front of us. We're trying to force him to work the ball down the field and not give up the big play because the big play gets them out of having to play red zone offense. We want to force everybody that we play to have to convert in the red zone consistently because the red zone is the hardest place for the offense to score. It's the biggest opportunity for the defense to either get a turnover or to hold them to three points. And that's our entire goal on defense. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd highly encourage you to do that. If you want to get more on this Big Nickel Over G defense, we have a ton of material on this in our text membership. All you have to do is text me. We have over an hour and 45-minute breakdown on how to run the Big Nickel Over G against the run, against the pass. If you want to shoot me a text, you can pick that, um, you can pick that video up. And then lastly, if you haven't got my defensive ebook yet, um, that is my complete defensive scheme for Madden 21. That link is in the description. has great pressure great coverage schemes and really does allow you to stop the run at a high level. So I'd highly encourage you if you haven't picked up the ebook yet, that link is in the description, but also go ahead and shoot me a text message and I'll shoot you that big nickel over G video. My number is 812-216-3644. Um, and uh, we'll be posting more videos today at four o'clock, six o'clock and eight o'clock PM Eastern time. If you want me to, see, if you want to see me use this defense, in live NFL matches, you can come by the stream uh, tonight um, at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you guys in a little bit.